Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video tutorial for the new Boston. In this video, we're going to be using uh, the remove attribute to um, undisable or re-enable this button, if you like. Um, and we're going to be focusing in on this remove attribute surrounding this sort of method that we're creating. Uh, and essentially what we're doing is we have a checkbox with the label I agree. Uh, and when we click on this, uh, the uh, continue button is enabled and we can go ahead and click it. Uh, we also disable this um, checkbox as well. So, you know, not really, uh, well, too much of a practical application, but there are practical applications to this. But I just wanted to create something more sort of applicable to real life to demonstrate the remove attribute function. So this is essentially what we're going to be creating. Let's go over to our text editor and start writing it. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is inside of my body area, I'm going to create the uh, checkbox itself and then also the button as well. So I'm going to make the button to be, well, I'm going to create the button with the attribute disabled, which will automatically disable this button. So let's go ahead and first of all create the button. Uh, I'm going to obviously create an input with a type of button. button. Uh, I'm going to set a value to this just to say continue. And I'm going to set a property disabled. I uh, will just show you first. In the browser, it looks like this. We can click on this button. If we go ahead and set the disabled um, attribute to disabled and we refresh, you can see that the button is now disabled. So that's in the state that we want it. We're going to go ahead and give this uh, button an ID of continue, which means that in jQuery we, we can then reference this as continue. Uh, obviously, you can use a class or you can select a button you know, as a whole. But in this case, we want uh, it for very specific uses. It won't belong to part of a class. It's just a, a single item with a single ID. OK, so now that we've done that, we just have our disabled button on our page. I'm going to go ahead and just surround uh, the checkbox in a paragraph tags. So we're going to say input type equals and check box. And then next to this, I just want to write I agree. So now we have this checkbox here, which we can check and uncheck. Uh, again, I'm going to give this an ID uh, just so we can reference it. And this is just going to be called agree. So what's going to happen now? We need to think of how we're going to, you know, sort of set about this process. We're going to click on the checkbox. Once the checkbox has been checked, we want to innate, uh, we want to enable this button and disable this button. So let's go ahead over to ext.js, which I've included on my page as well as jQuery.js. And in, in ext.js, we want to first of all wait for the document to be ready. So we say document.ready. And inside we have our function. So this is going to run when the document is ready. Uh, we want to bind an event handler. Let's just pull this down a bit to make it look a bit better. We're going to want to uh, bind an event handler to this checkbox. So when uh, it changes, we can check for the status on. Uh, and then we can go ahead and enable this uh, button by removing this disabled attribute. So let's go ahead and select our agree checkbox. Agree checkbox. And then we want to bind the event handler change to this. And inside of here will be a function, which we pull down. And in here, we can just test this by alerting out uh, checked, for example. So now when we refresh and I click this, you see that we get this um, we get this button, uh, this alert dialog box just up here. So now that we know that once we check it, we can perform, um, you know, an initial um, operation. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and disable the current element. So let's go ahead and well, actually, we'll we'll grab the state first, and we'll have a look at this. So I'm going to say state is equal to this, referring to the current deselected object or element, and I'm going to say val. Um, and that will take the value from this, um, the, the state, essentially. In actual fact, let's go ahead and say attribute value. And I'm going to alert out the state. So now, when I click on it, you see that we alert on. When I click on it again, you see that we alert nothing. 